Well, hi guys and gals, it's me, George, the Shade Tree Fix-It Man, and I'm back working on my uh, Cub Cadet Kohler K301 12 horsepower engine, and I'm uh, tearing it down, and I've already done a fair amount of it. I've got the piston out, I've got the crankshaft out and all that kind of stuff, and I didn't figure I need to bring you along with that. But I thought you might uh, enjoy figuring out how to remove the valves. Now, I've already done one. There's one of the valves right there. And I took that out of the, uh, that's the exhaust side. And uh, it's in pretty decent shape. No places where it was burnt, so it just needs to be cleaned up, and I'll lap it when I put it back in, and I'll show you how I did it when I put it back in. And uh, I'm not even going to pull the valve spring out, but to remove the valve, we do have to compress the valve spring. Now, uh, I don't have a regular valve spring compressor. I used to have one back in the day. But uh, I, when I was working on the Goofy Cart a couple of years ago or more, I made this one here. And I've had to modify it some more, as you can see right in here. This is, a, all it is is an old uh, C-clamp. This one is, uh, Bring, Brink Cotto. Brink Cotton. Yeah, that's the brand name on it. It's a vintage one. But what I did was I cut the end of a wrench off that had the right size to go down over the valve. See that? And over the valve spring and have an opening so that you can get your valve keeper out. <coughs> now I'll show you what the valve keeper is. I'm assuming that most of you guys that have come this far in tearing an engine apart already have some experience. But the valve keeper are these little tapered units right here that hook around the stem of the valve. You see that? No, you can't see that. Let me see if I can get my hand out of the way. There we go. It rides in this groove on the valve. And there are two of them, and they fit down, they are tapered, as you can see, they are tapered, and they fit down into the taper on the valve spring. So you have to compress the valve spring to get it away from these keepers, so that the keepers can then come out, and you have to take them out either with a magnet or you might be able to pick them out with a small screwdriver or it may be a combination of the two. Um, the first one I did, the exhaust valve, it actually, the bottom one fell out but I couldn't get it to come out all the way because I couldn't compress my spring back far enough with my compressor. And the reason I couldn't pull it back far enough is because this bolt or a stud was down in here and I should have made a video showing you how to get this stud out because well I had my valve um, compressor in here and I couldn't get a pair of pliers or anything like that in there so what I did was I put a couple of nuts on there and jammed one against the other and pulled that out of there and I didn't have to remove my valve spring compressor because they already had one of the keepers out and I didn't want to uh, didn't want to have to mess with that. So now what I'm going to do, and I'm not sure if I'm going to get you up. You're, I'm going to be right in your way because I have a head stud in the way over here, and I think I'm going to take this head stud out, and then I'll come back. That way I can rotate my valve spring compressor out of the way so you can see what we're doing. So hold on to your hats. Here we go.
Okay, so I got the same problem with this head stud. Doesn't want to come out. I tried using a pair of vice grips on there and still can't get it. So we're going to do it the smart way. And the smart way, you put two nuts on here like this and you jam them together. That's why they're called jam nuts. And you tighten down on the outside one like that and then once you've got that done now you can take your wrench and because you're coming out it wants to go against this nut here and it jams against it and if you get enough strength uh, okay I need a bigger wrench see if I can get this one on here like this and we'll make our wrench bigger like that there we go once you get it started then you should be able to keep on going I think I'm going to end up taking all these head studs out so I can clean them real well before I put the head back on. I don't mind them being tight down into the block and I'm probably going to put Loctite on them going down into the block. But I know when I started putting the lock nuts on there um, they were hard going on. So there we've got that off. Now Got a whole pile of tools piling up around here. Now we could take our valve spring compressor and I'm going to slide that right down in there just like that. It looks like I need to grind a little bit more off the end. Well it'll be alright because as I put pressure on it, it will uh, it will square up anyway. Now I gotta show you. So here's what it looks like down on side of the valve. We got the this part of our clamp right on the valve itself and then the other part is down here. And see if I could do this one-handed because I took you off the stand so that I could Can you see it squeezing it down? Just like that. And I can actually slide it down on there more now. Okay. Now, I've got to look down in here. And i got to get my magnet. What did I do? Oh, it's right here. got to get my magnet and go in here well let me look down in there ah see what I see no you don't see what I see down in the bottom down in there stop shaking George there's one of the keepers right there fell right off there's one Now, where's our other one? I twisted the valve spring compressor around and repositioned it on the spring. And there is, sorry for the shaky cam, there is the other keeper dropped right out when I rotated it. And there's the reason for the magnet right there. Now, we just back off the valve spring compressor. Now that we have the keepers out of there, all we have to do now is to reach down here and put our fingernail underneath that and pull our valve right out. And let's take a look at this valve. Looks like it's been seating pretty good too. It's just there's oil on there 
and we knew it had a problem with oil. That's why we're rebuilding it. But the valves are in good condition, so they just need to be cleaned up. And we'll have to uh, clean the seats. And as I said, we're going to hone. We're going to clean up all of this stuff here. We're going to end up honing the cylinder. And uh, before we put the valves back in, we're going to lap them. And I'll show you how that works when we get to that point. That's it for today, though. Um, I got to do some cleaning on parts in preparation for our next time together. And next time, we'll put those valves back in. After we clean this up, I'm going to remove the rest of these studs. You don't need to see me doing that. It's going to be the same process. So next time back, you'll see me lapping the valves, installing the valves, and putting the keepers in. And hopefully we'll be able to get to honing the cylinder as well. This has not much of a ridge. In fact, it has a very, very minimal ridge. I'm trying to see if I can catch it with my fingernail. No, there's no place that I can catch the ridge with a fingernail. So that's a very good cylinder. So that's just going to need cleaning up. And you can see it's already flash rusting from sitting in my shop here. So we'll need to get that done. And then we'll be able to reinstall our new kit. Um, we have... I'll show you the kit that I bought. Take you right over here on the parts washer where we got room. Tight spaces here in the goofy garage, you know. Woo! Here's our kit. I haven't even opened it up completely. We have a brand new piston. We have a new connecting rod. We have a new set of rings. We have all of our gaskets, including the head gasket, the pan gasket. It even comes with a brand new spark plug. How do you like them apples? So I'm, I'm stoked. We'll get back to putting this all into the uh, old motor and getting it running. And then I'll have to get the big dog over here to help me put it back into the tractor. And it's going to take some doing to get it hooked up because uh, uh, when I got it, it was just sitting in the frame and nothing was hooked up. So I'm sure there's going to be some fabrication going on. We'll probably do that up in the carport, I'm thinking. But we shall see. Till next time, this is George, the Shade Tree Fix It Man, thank, saying thanks for watching, commenting, subscribing, thumbs up, sharing, all them good things. Bye for now. And just in case you're wondering, for those who've been asking, Goofy Cart is still in here. And uh, I haven't pulled the carburetor. I haven't done anything with it. That's the bottom line right there. I need to get back on it. I haven't been online too much because uh, my computer crashed. Or one of my computers, I have two. But one of them crashed. And the first one, the hard drive in it died. And I got that one fixed, and then the second one, the hard drive, the main hard drive died. So I actually have replaced the second computer, and uh, I'm still fiddling with it, getting programs. But uh, that's the update, the non-update, on the Goofy Cart. Bye for now.